Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, things aren't always what they seem. That's actually a core belief that I have. In other words, where you make your real money is in the gap between what people think and what's really going on. You have a great fight. Great fight. Coming up this weekend. And I'm talking about the fight between Chris Eubank Jr. Who's going off at a better than minus 250 favorite. And he's facing a guy, Matt Korobov. 36 years old, has been around long enough to have fought Andy Lee. By the way, that fight was competitive until the stoppage. Now, I believe the public's looking at the records, and the public sees that Karabov, decorated amateur, he's fought some of the best in the sport, lost to Jamal Charlo on the scorecards. Right? They're also seeing that he got a draw in his last fight against a fighter named Aline. Now, one of the things I've learned in life is you need to go by your scorecard. Not the scorecards of the judges, which might be influenced by crowd noise. By perceived pressure from promoters. By politics. Right? Matt Korobov won both of those fights. From time to time I hear from the Jamal Charlo crowd, right? They want to tell me that people like Canelo, while he's fighting Golovkin multiple times, while he's fighting Danny Jacobs, while he's moving out of the division to fight a champ at 168, to fight a champ at 175, some of you want me to believe that while Canelo's doing all this, He's avoiding Jamal Charlo, right? Well, all I can say is I've seen Jamal Charlo lose a fight with my own two eyes. I know his record's unbeaten, right? Big deal. Korobov beat him. He had no idea how to cope with Korobov's straight left. Right now, all I can say is they gave, in my opinion, Jamal Charlo, that fight. Look, this is not a fan site. This is a gambler site. Right? I don't feel that I owe any fighter anything other than the truth. I understand. Jamal Charlo has a lot of fans. He's certainly a very entertaining fighter to watch. He lost that fight. Right? Well, then Korobov beats Aleem. They announce in the ring in the ring that Korobov won the fight then of course afterwards we're hearing about an addition era why does this seem to happen to older fighters has anyone figured this one out we hear about an addition era so that that fight was formally called a draw right ridiculous let me say by the way in the Aleem fight Korobov knocks Aleem down the referee makes a mistake Right? The referee seemed to think it was a slip. Yeah, that was a slip after a punch hit Alim. Right? Just to be clear. Then when they were inside, it's no match. Right? Karabov dominates the first part of the fight. Karabov just knows how to defend himself. Had better defense than Alim. Right? Landed great short punches. Karabov is a guy who you have to look at his punches he lands very flush punches but they're short right he doesn't frame them in a way where it's obvious but as you watch the fight you realize he's the better fighter well he's on a roll and he's facing Chris Eubank Jr. now Eubank is fascinating right Eubank is a guy who at times looks unskilled in the ring as he did against George Groves Right, George Groves at one point in that fight only has one hand to deal with. And Chris Eubank 
didn't know what to do, wasn't able to exploit it. Granted, it was late in the fight, but let's just say up until that point, up until the Groves injury, it wasn't like Chris Eubank looked like he was operating scientifically. Eubank is also a guy who goes through trainers. Now it's interesting, you, you look at a lot of great fighters, right, and they'll have their corners almost forever, right? Um, Ali with Angelo Dundee. Folks, that's a several year union. Later, Ray Leonard with Angelo Dundee. That's a several year union, right? Once Lennox Lewis hooks up with Emmanuel Stewart, that's a several year union. Vladimir Klitschko hooks up with Emmanuel Stewart. That's a several year union. Now, when you see a guy like Eubank, and Eubank, you know, he's one of my favorite fighters because he's a daredevil. He's explosive. He's sequential. In other words, I get the feeling he's the guy who's in the gunfight. You fire, right? You don't have an automatic. Eubank will stay in the pocket and fire back, thinking that he has a microsecond between when you can fire your next shot, right? This is a go-for-broke fighter. The problem is, if this fight is low energy, if it becomes a math quiz more than a fight, if it becomes about angles, timing instead of a shootout and a blaze of glory, right? If the fight gets slowed down, then Korobov, who's a southpaw, who's going off at a plus 200, this is an odds play fight, is going to have the advantage. This is an intriguing fight. It's an odds play. I wouldn't touch it if the fighters were even money. But because I'm getting a plus 200 with Matt Korobov, and I believe it's a 50-50 fight, the bet I'm recommending is to take the 36-year-old Korobov to win the fight. You can hedge the play on Fox Bet, according to Odds Checker, at a plus 100 for the fight not going the distance. In other words, we're going to go against public opinion. The fight is in Barclays. You're going to have a lot of crowd noise. You're going to have the crowd impacting the scoring of the fight somewhat. Right? But I believe if the fight goes the distance, Karabov should have the upper hand on the scorecards. And I say this after Karabov, in my opinion, got robbed the last two fights on the scorecards. This is a different fighter than Avni Yildirim, who Eubank beat. In other words, Eubank is great when he's facing an opponent who's predictable. Karabov is not predictable, right? This is that group of fighters you always want to consider betting on, the KG veterans. Right, you look on paper, certain things don't add up. You're like 36. Ooh, ooh, you know, unless he's a heavyweight, I'm hesitant. Right, 36, and then you're seeing on paper recent loss, recent draw. Right, you realize the guy is not a heavy-handed guy. He's not a knockout puncher. Right, you're watching his fight. He's not relying on hand speed. What he's relying on is just being off at the side. <coughs> <coughs> Trying to lull you to sleep. <coughs> so he can come right down the middle with the right hand. Right? Frustrating you by being a southpaw and being on the wrong side. Right? Slowing down the pace of the fight grabbing you, not allowing you to bust off four or five punch combinations, using spacing in the ring where you want to move to your left to catch up with the southpaw, 
So he, of course, will maneuver himself over by the ropes so you don't have the space to get to the left of him. Right? This is that guy. He should not be a plus 200 underdog. Right? The world would view this fight differently if he was properly given the win over Jamal Charlo. Right? In my opinion, he was robbed in that fight. Now here, because people don't realize he was robbed, because people see a draw after that fight, and he was robbed in that fight. Boxing's political. Right? Because people don't realize that this was an decorated amateur. This is a guy who's already fought Andy Lee. That fight was close. Lee always had a big left hand. You saw it in that fight. Right? And given the instability, and that's what it is, in Chris Eubank's career, this is the opposite of Manny Pacquiao, Freddie Roach, another one of these, you know, unions that went a long time. Has anyone noticed that when Golovkin was with Abel Sanchez, he was a terror, ran roughshod through the middleweight division. He leaves Abel Sanchez, in my opinion, he lost his last fight. <laughs> I mean, let's. I'm not even talking to Canelo. I'm talking about the Derevianchenko fight, right? When I see a guy who's changing trainers a bit too much, right? I start to question things, especially when that guy's fighting a KG vet like Matt Korobov. I'll concede. You bank younger, bigger punch. Faster hand speed. Easier to watch highlights. I understand Eubank highlights. Guys get hurt in Eubank highlights. He's opening up. Right? Korobov is, comparatively speaking, like watching paint dry. But you appreciate the work. He's off at the side. His opponent misses. He's countering his opponent. Then he decides, hey, I'm going to be a lead puncher. <laughs> and there's a round where the opponent's getting hit flush because Karabov has flipped the script. Right? Then he's positioning himself in ways where the other guy can't find him, can't hit him, even though he's barely moving. I like his game. The bet I'm recommending here is Karabov to win at a plus 200, hedged with the fight ending inside of the distance at even money on Fox Bet. Right? In other words, it's a plus 200 hedged with a plus 100. You can structure the play so you win if either happens. But, let's be clear on the risk. If Chris Eubank comes out and outboxes Korobov, folks, Eubank outboxed James DeGale. Right? That was a James DeGale on the verge of retirement. But Eubank came out and outboxed James DeGale, who, to me, is one of the better fighters of the last 15 years. Right? If Eubank is inspired, after all, the fight's in New York City. <laughs> High-profile fight. Big venue. If Eubank wants to remind everyone that he's still in the mix, and if he gives an inspired performance goes the distance and gets a decision against a guy who has been losing questionable decisions of late. You lose it all. It's high risk. I like the underdog at plus 200. I'll hedge to play with the fight ending inside the distance at even money. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you take exception to anything I've said, I know there's a Charlo group out there that believe in their man and believe their man has been shut out. Right? That their man should be in the Canelo-Danny Jacobs discussion. Right? That when you talk about middleweight, you shouldn't be able to overlook a guy who at least on paper is unbeaten. If you disagree with me on the Karabov-Charlo fight, if you disagree with me on the Karabov-Aline fight, 
right? Where Ali? <laughs> Ali gets a draw after they announce in the ring that Karabov won. And you're looking at the highlights and you're thinking to yourself, you've got to be kidding me. By the way, Karabov doesn't hit the canvas in that fight. Only Aleem does. Right? Of course they call it a slip. Well, if you feel Aleem deserved the draw or deserved the win, or if you feel there are other people in the weight class who we should be focusing on, I hope you leave that those comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.